All right, real quickly for Wednesday, the 27th, it's an early release day, so we're just gonna do this slideshow over Manifest Destiny quickly. There should be another bell in a minute. Apologize about that loud bell. Um, I wanna start with this map, and I wish that it had kind of a line going from Northern Georgia all the way up to upstate New York where the Appalachian Mountains were, because this was the original 13 colonies. Then we fight the French and Indian War, so we get all this here in the green. And then we're gonna do the Louisiana Purchase and be going out this way, so we go from here to here to here. We're expanding westward. Then we come all the way back. We get this little piece of pink right here in 1819. This is the uh, Adams on East Treaty of 1819. John Quincy Adams is Secretary of State for James Monroe, and he negotiates the purchase of Florida from Spain. So now we go, we've got all of this. I'm not gonna worry about the orange, I'm not gonna worry about the little purple here for Maine and for this piece up here. Yeah, I'm not gonna bog down in it. But the next big piece is gonna be this chunk of blue right here, which is Texas. Texas got its independence in 1836 from Mexico. Texas fought for its independence. For nine years, Texas is an independent country and they were seeking to be annexed by the US because that meant protection, that meant statehood, that meant all the benefits of being a state with the US and it would facilitate trade. Tech, uh, the US held off though because of, we gotta keep our balance in the Senate of slave states and free states. Texas grows cotton, it's gonna be a slave state. So there's hesitancy to add Texas. Um, Texas gets annexed in 1845. We fight a war with Mexico. As a result of that war with Mexico, we get all of this in what's called the Mexican Cession. This big chunk of orange. California, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, and Colorado are all going to be granted to the U.S. because of the war with Mexico. This happens in 1848. In 1844, the talk was going to war with England over this piece of green up here, but it ended up being Mexico that we went to war with. We negotiated out in Oregon uh, compromise with England, and it made for a nice straight border to use the 49th parallel, and the U.S. get everything south of the 49th parallel, England get everything north of it, and so Oregon country, and then California. There's this little piece of red right here. It's not gonna be until 1853. We had started constructing railroads from California, using Chinese labor, by the way, using uh, uh, constructing roads, but we hit the Grand Canyon. We can't, we know we're not going to be able to navigate the Rocky Mountains or the Grand Canyon. So we have sent a negotiator, a diplomat named Gadsden, and he went to Mexico and he worked out a deal for $10 million. We will take this little piece of red so that we can run our. $10 million, we can run a railroad through southern Arizona into Texas. And then from there, shoot on up uh, to the Midwest and so forth. But that's gonna help us complete the Transcontinental Railroad. That is a map of Manifest Destiny from sea to shining sea, all right? This picture is also reflective of Manifest Destiny. Notice the direction that the spirit of Manifest Destiny is going. She's coming from, here's the ships in the background in New York Harbor. Trains are moving west. Cattle ranchers are pushing cattle west on horseback. Wagon and frontier people are going west. The stagecoach is going west. Okay. There's this movement from right to left, from right to left, into an unknown. We're going to push the Indians that opposite direction. We're going to push the buffalo that opposite direction across. And eventually, the goal is to make the U.S. go from sea to shining sea. Quickly, causes and effects of manifest destiny. Oregon had fertile land. They also had large beaver reserves and the beaver fur was a uh, prized commodity for a brief time. Texas is ideal for raising cattle and growing cotton. Most Americans believe in the idea of going from where we started all the way across the Pacific Ocean. We're gonna introduce a group called the Mormons to you in a minute. Jesus Christ Church of Latter-day Saints. They need a safe home. They will find that after the Mexican session, after Mexico gives up California, New Mexico and Arizona. Gold is discovered in California. All of this stuff leads to the effect of westward movement. These are all causes of westward movement. The westward movement is gonna have the following effects. 
Texas gets their, wins their war for independence. So many people from the U.S. came to Texas to raise cattle and to grow cotton that the war for independence was successful. Then the U.S. annexes Texas, forget this right now in Oregon, the U.S. is going to defeat Mexico in war because of Texas and cotton kingdom spreads westward. Then we're also going to have the Britain and U.S. divide Oregon up and the effects today are that the U.S. goes from sea to shining sea. California and Texas are the most populous states. New York has been bumped to third. And Mexican-American culture enriches the U.S. because you had a number of Mexican citizens who were loyal to Mexico, but now their country has been removed from the equation. They are now brought in as American citizens. So starting with the Oregon Trail, it begins in Independence, Kansas. Timing is everything, you'll find out. You want to start in April, no later than May. You got to make your way across what will become five states, and you're trying to get somewhere here along the coastline because there's Sierra Nevada mountains here. There are Rocky Mountains running through here. You want to get past those mountain ranges before the hard snows hit, before the winter sets in, okay? England and the U.S. vie for control of England. The election of 1844 put it to the Whigs against the Democrats. Henry Clay is the Whig. There are no Republicans. That's not going to be until Abraham Lincoln. Henry Clay, a Whig, is going to run against James Polk, a Democrat. James Polk is talking about going to war. Talk of war with England in this election, and people are going to Oregon because of the good land, frequent rainfall because they're along the Pacific Coast, and there was fur trapping. The Oregon Trail extended from Independence, Missouri to Oregon. So there's Independence, Missouri, all the way to Oregon. If you arrive late, you're gonna get snowed in within the mountain ranges. So you got to time it correctly and you gotta push through. It's a hard drive to get there. You don't have time to lolly gag around. The border is set at the 49th parallel. The north of that is English territory, south of, to the California is gonna be the US. So you look here, it's a very smooth natural border. It's not a river, it's just a line. It's a line of latitude. It's a parallel line of latitude, the 49th parallel. From this Oregon territory, you get the states of Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. Texas are Texas. This map shows 1836, large chunks of Native American settlements, large chunks of American settlements, cattle ranches and cotton being grown, and disputed territory here. And this becomes a real issue. Is the border with Mexico gonna be the Rio Grande, which is what Santa Ana agreed to at the time of his capture after the Battle of San Jacinto, or Santa Ana was arguing that that was signed under duress. I had agreed to the Nueces River near Corpus Christi being the actual border with um, Texas and Mexico. James Polk has worked out the issue with Oregon, so he's going to send an army to Mexico. We're more inclined to want to fight Mexico because we got a better chance of beating Mexico than we would England. So we're going to compromise on Oregon, but we're going to go to war with Mexico. We send troops to the Rio Grande, we're going to establish this as the border. Mexico sends troops to the Rio Grande because they're going to try and push the U.S. back to the Nueces. And so when two armies get together, wars break out. A lot of stuff I've already said. Cattle ranches and cotton plantations brings Americans. They're speeding the border, troops have gathered. In this Mexican war, we're gonna fight in the West. The US sends an army through Colorado to California and we fight in California to defeat the Mexicans there. We're gonna fight in Texas from Corpus Christi. We're gonna push southward from there into Mexican territories from Northern Mexico towards Mexico City. And then we're gonna have another army that's gonna sail from New Orleans and make its way to Veracruz, just north of the um, just north of the Yucatan Peninsula. If you're familiar with Cozumel from a cruise in the Gulf of Mexico, north of that is Veracruz, and then from there we'll push in across Monterey to Mexico City. We are going to capture uh, the Mexican capital, which brings up an interesting question. Let me see if I can adjust this slightly for just a minute so we can see this map. And it's far away and kind of small, I apologize. But here's the United States where my hand is. 
And we're talking about going from here on across. But if our goal is manifest destiny, go from here to here, how come we didn't also go here to here and here to here? How come we didn't take everything in manifest destiny? The reason why we didn't go northward and want to take Canada is because there's some rich farmlands through here, but everything above it is wasteland and ice and snow. There was no desire to take that. And the growing seasons are so short here, there was no real draw to that as well either. And it would have meant a war with England, and in the case of Quebec, probably would have meant having some issues with France. If you don't know, Canada has two official languages. Most of the country speaks English. But where Montreal is, this, uh, um, they don't have to say this province of Quebec, they speak French. And so um, they have two official languages in Canada. We didn't keep Mexico, we didn't go through Central America, we didn't take South America, mainly because we were already having such a hard time just adding individual states where we were at because of slavery. Is it a slave state or a free state? It would have been so complicated and so messy if we had taken all of this stuff. And so our manifest destiny is just to kind of go across in what is the modern day U.S. today. But we had the opportunity to take more for ourselves. The aftermath of this war with Mexico is the signing of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. The Rio Grande is today still the border between Texas and Mexico. This is the real prize, though, of Guadalupe Hidalgo. There's a Mexican cession. Mexico cedes or gives up. The word C-E-D-E, cede, means to give up. They give us California, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah. Those will all be carved out from what's given to us. Later on, we come back and we give $15 million as kind of a, we kind of knew what the outcome was going to be. We knew we were going to win the war. We feel bad. So here's $15 million for it, for what we took. And then, like I said before, we're going to give another $10 million in 1853 for the Gadsden Purchase so we can complete our railroads. That gets us to the Mormons. We'll get to the Chinese in just a minute. Joseph Smith is the founder of Mormonism. Jesus Christ Church of Latter-day Saints. If you've ever had somebody knock your door and say, hey, I'm with the Church of Latter-day Saints, I have some literature I'd like to leave with you, those are Mormons. And that's how they grow their flock. They, they do door-to-door -door missionary work. And they don't just do it in the U.S., they do it in countries throughout the world. Joseph Smith is the founder. And as a young man, he's walking along one day and has an epiphany, has a vision of Jesus Christ from the New Testament after his crucifixion and death resurrection jesus christ according to joseph smith made his way to north america and went among the native american people showing them miracles doing for them what he had done for the people of the middle east okay um and so he wrote down his own book of mormon additional stories to the bible mormons will accept the doctrine of the old testament they will accept the doctrine of the new testament and they push forward the the theological thoughts of their third book, the Book of Mormon. Christians, traditional Christians, acknowledge the Old Testament and the New Testament. They do not necessarily acknowledge the Book of Mormon. But, anyhow, they started in upstate New York along the Erie Canal. One of the um, features of this early Mormon church was that males could have multiple wives. And this lifestyle caused great um, deal of uncomfortableness among the neighbors in upstate New York and it was coming to blows and so they moved and left upstate New York and set up a new settlement in Ohio. Again, their lifestyle angered the neighbors and so they were forced to move. So they went to Missouri, set up a, set up a settlement there. Their lifestyle angered the neighbors. They were seen as, um, anyhow, just upset the neighbors, and they were forced to move. And they went to Illinois, and in Illinois, Joseph Smith is actually killed. Um, he, he gets hit with gunfire, and he dies. So Brigham Young, this is Joseph Smith, this is Brigham Young. Brigham Young becomes a new leader. He says, we're going to go somewhere where people will leave us alone. The same way that Moses had to lead the Jewish people through the desert and to the wilderness, 
We're going to find us a desert. We'll hang out there. People can leave us alone. They make their way to Utah, what will become Utah and Salt Lake City. They have engineers who develop irrigation systems to allow for growing crops. They're going to have drinkable water, and it leads to a growing city. They found their own university, Brigham Young University. Jim McMahon was the first famous quarterback from BYU. He led the Chicago Bears in 1986 to an undefeated season. But this is Steve Young, who would succeed Joe Montana in the San Francisco 49ers and lead the 49ers to a Super Bowl victory. This is Mitt Romney, a very famous Mormon, the governor of Massachusetts, and he ran for president against Barack Obama in 2012. He was defeated by Barack Obama, but his uh, candidacy was a huge milestone because he was the first Mormon to run for office for a major party. And it was compared to John Kennedy, a Democrat, running for the presidency as the first Catholic to be elected. And, and the big deal about a Catholic being elected is Catholics follow the Pope. And, the, and so the fear was if Kennedy is president, is, is he actually the president or is the Pope going to use Catholicism to pull the strings of John Kennedy and the Pope is really the president? Um, anyhow, Kennedy was president. The Pope was not pulling his string. But it's a milestone event. The election of a Catholic president, John Kennedy, the candidacy uh, and potential presidency of a Mormon is a milestone event. But these are the Mormons, and they make their way to Utah and settle it. And now we have the Chinese who arrive in California. There's a promise of steady work that draws many Chinese to the U.S. Men and a very, very few women. The women are going to find out there's no work for them at all, and it's going to be a bad circumstance for them. Some came to mine for gold because the gold rushes on in 1848. They find gold in what becomes San Francisco. The session happens in 1848. We get California in 1848. We discover gold in 1849, and by 1850, so many people come to California that it is ready for statehood. 48, 49, 50. That quickly, it goes from being a frontier area to being ready for statehood, having the number of people required to apply for statehood in just two years. The reason why San Francisco's mascot is the 49ers is because of the rush of people to California to look for gold. It refers to the gold rush of 1849. Most who would have arrived ended up working on the railroad. All of the Chinese experienced discrimination and mistreatment by the white majority. They were treated, they had it slightly better than slaves because they did get paid a wage, but there was very harsh treatment of them. And, and they were very much second tier citizens. And it's also worth noting at this time, uh, Hispanics, Mexican settlers were second class citizens. And eventually there's gonna be white settlers, white Catholics who are gonna be facing discrimination um, by a Protestant majority in the US. But enough came to warrant entire neighborhoods in, in major U.S. cities. It's misworded right here. It's not in most U.S. cities, in most major U.S. cities. So San Francisco has a major Chinatown. New York City has a major Chinatown. Dallas, Texas has a major Chinatown. All right? But they have their own neighborhoods. So that is our lesson for today. Thank you. Have a good afternoon.